Okay, so I got all of this uh, fake money when I was in Washington. I uh, bought a couple of pads of it. It's really nice, it's double-sided as well. Um, so yeah, I've got a quite quite a few different styles, and there's another one there. Um, what I like, <laughs> 10 million dollars, there you go. <laughs> but what I like about it is it's called ba Hell Banknotes. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sticking them on here. I want to have this ripped paper effect. So I'm going to sort of glue parts, rip them off, uh, and sort of cover a bit of this uh, canvas. And then I'm going to start doing some drawings over the top and just paint and crap and shit. <laughs> and put on and ripped off and put on and ripped off. Well, I really like that effect and I want to sort of create that effect on this canvas. So um, this originally had um, a glued down sections of watercolour paper and you can sort of see the joins there. Um, but what I've done is I've ripped off bits that have hung over the edge a bit um, and then I've just started to stick down all of this paper money and then what I'm doing is I'm letting it dry a bit. I've just finished gluing all of this this down. Now when it dries because I haven't glued all of it, I can just rip sections off, similar to sort of what, I, what I've done along here. Um, and I might come back with some, just some other labels and other stuff, and slowly build up um, this paper texture. Then I might come back with some sandpaper and sandpaper it back a little bit. Then I'll start drawing my imagery over the top and painting and uh, see what's going to happen. But um, yeah, I don't know, I just got into this idea that I wanted to do this paper uh, thing so we'll see where it goes what else you can do to help sort of age uh, bits of things that you use is you can put them outside like you can collect a whole bunch of um, labels and packets and then so leave them outside you know for a few months in the weather put them top, bundle them all up and leave them out and let them get weathered and old or another thing you can do is you can just go collecting rubbish that lays around on the side of the road that has been weathered already. Um, that's always a great way and it helps recycle as well. Um, so what I'm doing, I actually quite like this golden curry, Japanese curry label. So I've just ripped it a bit, made it look like it's a bit worn. So what I've done is I've come back with some sandpaper now and I'm just like sandpapering it a bit to sort of give it more of an aged look. Then I'll glue it down in, in parts and then rip sections off again. Um, tomato soup labels, you know, lots of different stuff. Um, I'm going to leave some areas of course because I'm going to start painting over to bring them back. Um, but um, yeah, we'll see where we're going. I'm using citrus old papers as well, cutouts of newspaper, just different sections, all different stuff. So what you can do is you can just take some sandpaper, this is pretty coarse, and just rub it, rub it across it and let it, let it rip the paper or burn holes in it, you know, because you want to age it. What you could also do is throw the canvas outside and wet it, or leave it outside, especially if you've got lots, like, lots of weather and just storms and stuff, you can create some really cool, cool effects. If you want that aged paper look, then you really gotta, you know, let it go to town. So just do anything. You might even burn it, get a torch, and burn bits of it, and you know, do lots of crazy stuff. So what else you can do is, I've just take my scanner here, right, and I've just thrown just all different um, promotional leaflets and crap and, and just um, taking the stuff, that money that I've got, this golden curry label and just throwing it on the scanner and then what I've done is I'm just printing out a copy onto just normal paper, nothing special and you can use that to glue down as well. So if you don't want to ruin your good stuff, all of it, then you can just... See? You just print it out like that. 
then you can rip these up and then throw them on there as well. So I'm just doing a selection of different of those as, as well. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking some stencils and some paint and some crayons and just start drawing random images. Um, I'm not worried about what I'm doing, so I've just taken this. It had a bunch of flowers on it, so I'm just going to take some paint and my brush and just dab it on like so, just to, to build up some a paint layer. I could use spray paint as well. I might even want to paint around the edge a bit, like so. Just so you can just start to, and I'll turn it over and push the negative side down on top. Just to sort of start to build up some sort of, um, oh, what's the word? Just building up layers, I guess, is what I wanted to say. And then I might um, continue areas. I could def define the cat a bit. So you just want to build up loads of layers, like, and don't get too concerned with with anything at this stage. Like I said, I can come back with some. Uh, I use a combination of chalk-based pastels and oil crayons, um, just to get different effects. Um, yeah, well, that's gold, that's pretty cool. I'm just being very random, I have no idea what I'm doing. Just See, at this, at this stage you're sort of best off putting it back, standing back away from it, so you can sort of see what you've got. Because when you've, I had it laying down on the table and you sort of, if you've got it laying down and you're close to it, you can't really get a sense of what's going on. So it's good to put it on an easel, get it back away from you so you can step back and go, alright, I like that, I like that, I don't like that, I, don't, I like that. And then you can start to work out some sort of thing. And at this stage, like I said, it's still very random. I'm going to start doing some drawings. I might add a couple of my, more of my stencils images over it. I might even add more layers of paper. Sand it back a little bit. Do some drawings here and there. And just start to get a feel for it. Because you really do have to start to build a bit of a relationship with, your, with the work. It's like, you know, when you get to know a friend. It, it takes a little while to understand them. To get a feel for what's going on. And I sort of have that same connection with my paintings when I'm working at them. You know, you sort of, you like them but you're not sure why and then, you know, the more you play around with them and the more you do stuff, you sort of, you know, you develop that friendship and that trust. So that's what I sort of do. Um, but yeah, um, you know, I might start drawing some flowers in. Um, and we'll see what we'll see what happens. So 
yeah, if he does banish us all to hell, yeah, who cares if you pay your bills? But I must say, I've already paid my, my uh, gas and electric because they were, you know, otherwise they would have turned it off and I still need my gas and electric. And then the other thing is, people were saying, no, he's going to just spirit everyone away to heaven and we are going to be stuck here till the end of the world, which is October 21st. So yeah, okay, you already got some of my bills. Now, I'm not going to pay my credit cards until October 22nd, because let's see what happens. So I just get a little interest for that. I'm not going to go out and charge up to my crazy, because what if I have to wind up paying for them? That would stink. But I do want to pay for, hello, my cable, otherwise I don't, I lose my internet. Even if the world does have anything, because I want my internet to go all the way through, and my electric, and my gas to heat and cool my home. So anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm very worried about this, and I wonder if you're comfortable with me about it. Do you believe in the rapture? Do you believe in the final demise on October 21st? I don't know, but I'm going to try to make sure I'm as prepared as, 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 as anything for whatever happens. I may even start wearing local mama's force, you know, you never know. It could help in a pinch. So anyway, yeah, I'm very worried. Let me know your thoughts on it. Daisy. So that's where I am now. Um, this morning I was having a bit of a moment and I wrote on Facebook um, a painting begins with no idea or starts with no idea and ends with no idea. Um, well for me it does. And, um, yeah, just keep building up those layers and knocking them back and adding imagery. And um, we'll see where this one uh, takes me and takes you. Talk to you soon. Later.